talk about comic genius and GB News star John Cleese, who has speculated that he may bring back Faulty Towers. So, do remakes work? Does this risk tainting his wonderful legacy? And would the show be allowed to be funny in these politically correct times? Huh. Let's speak to a man who that we've wanted to have on the show for a long, long time, the legendary actor John Lyons, who you'll have seen alongside David Jason as the star of A Touch of Frost, as well as countless other stage, film and TV hits, including The Sweeney, The Bill, George and Mildred, and On the Buses. He's just told me, off-air, 500 different shows he's done, probably and counting. John Lyons, welcome to Mark Dolan tonight. So this is your 501st you. appearance. Uh, well, maybe <laughs> 502, something like that. You're yeah. close, yes. Um, but you'll be playing yourself tonight. Yes, indeed. Indeed. How do actors feel being themselves on telly? Well, Are you uncomfortable? No, well, no, I'm not. I'm not, but you're right. A mm. lot of actors do. Now, I do pantomime every year, which is great, great fun. A lot of actors won't do pantomime mm. because when you're acting as you and I are now, you would have the imaginary fourth wall in which we... Ju so the audience are there, but there's an imaginary fourth wall. And you can wall. hide. Yes. When you do panto, they take that fourth wall and you've got to turn and you've got to face the audience. And they come back at you. So you're really playing yourself. A lot of actors can't do that. It doesn't bother me, but a lot of actors, and I understand it, can't do it. No, so there's different types, aren't yes. there? It's like comedians. I'm, I'm a comedian by trade as well as broadcaster, and, yeah. and um, there are two ty types of comedians. There's the comedians with the funny bones, who just walk on stage and people are laughing, no. um, who are very much as funny as themselves. I think at the moment Peter Kay would qualify. Yes. Uh, Tommy Cooper back in the day. No, and then there are the others who, who just have the craft and they create a kind of material for themselves, and it's almost like acting. Yeah. It's the two types, you know. Very so. much. Uh, well, let's, uh, let's talk about comedy, actually, because you've been in some of the biggest comedy shows um, that we've seen in this country. On the Buses, which is an out-and-out -out classic. Man About the House. George and Mildred, which was a favourite of mine growing up. Yeah. Uh, Love Thy Neighbour, wonderfully on PC. <laughs> um, can we talk about a possible Faulty Towers reboot? Would it work? Well, off the top of my head, I would say no. I would say it was a bad idea. But it's been tried before a few times, not that, but other shows. Yeah. And it's never quite the same. Mm. And when you think about it, Forty Towers, they only did 12. Yeah. 12 episodes. And they were wonderful. Each, and, each single one mm. was wonderful. So to recreate that would be, would be difficult. And, of course, you couldn't do it with the same cast. Most of them, unfortunately, are not here anymore. So it probably would be difficult. Although, having said that... I do remember when we were doing Touch of Frost with Sir David Jason, mm. he said to me one day, they've asked me to do um, a little bit of uh, Only Fools and Horses again. What do you think? Well, I didn't have time to talk to him because we were called away. Yeah. But I thought afterwards, not a good idea. Yeah. And quite a few people said, no, it was so good, it would be a shame to go back. But they did, and they did. They certainly did one uh, Christmas special. And it was a great hit. And it was very funny. Batman and Robin, if you remember that. Absolute classic. Wonderful. So, yes, I was wrong there, so I could be wrong with 40 Towers. Uh, yes, I mean, I think the important thing is that you need the original writer on board, don't you? So, yes. so sadly, John Sullivan, who created and wrote Only Fools and Horses... He's gone. He's gone now. He was, he was around to write that episode. Yes. You need the source material. I guess John Cleese mm. has lost his co-writer, um, possibly due to ill health, which is Connie Booth. Yeah. So you, you really would want the, the original lineup, yes, wouldn't you? indeed. So it, um, would, and be, the cast. it would be difficult. Yes. Um, and, and what about comedy these days? I mean, as I said, you've, I've, I've just gone through this litany of TV hits that you've been part of. Um, what's happening to comedy now? Do you think that political correctness is impacting creativity on TV? Well, yes, I'm sure, I'm sure it is. Um, certainly, you wouldn't get away today with what we got away with in the 60s and 70s. I mean, on the buses in particular, you know, that was all about girls with, with breasts and mini skirts and what have you. You wouldn't be able to get away with that now. Mm. So, yes, it, um, I think it has. But then there's not too many um, situation comedies made these days. Mm. In fact... For actors, there's very little on TV for actors as such. Well, I wonder whether writers are afraid to write anything now. Well, I'm sure they are. Causing offence, because if you make something completely inoffensive, I would humbly suggest it stops being funny. Yes. 
Yes, I see what you're saying. I mean, can I imagine if I showed you a politically correct sitcom, there wouldn't be many chuckles, would no, there? No, there wouldn't be many laughs. <laughs> And people would soon turn off. You're absolutely right. Well, you see, with On the Buses and George and Mildred, I mean, George and Mildred, that was the most um, uh, seaside postcard uh, comedy you could think of. And they were cruel to each other. Yes, terribly. A borderline abusive relationship, but it was hilarious. It was very, very funny. It was good. But, you could, no, you couldn't make those anymore. So I think people would soon turn off nowadays. Uh, it's interesting as well watching uh, how dominated TV and film dramas are by... Oxbridge-educated men, you know, chaps that have been to private school. Mm. You've got your yeah. Cumberbatch, uh, uh, yes. uh, Benedict Cumberbatch. You've got, uh, uh, the, you know, lots and lots of uh, these big stars. And they're all very talented people. Oh, of yeah. course, of course, they are. But um, is class still a barrier into acting? Do you think? Well, no, I don't think it is. Uh, it probably would have been uh, in the fifties when it got into the 60s, and I went to drama school in 61, mm. and I left in 64, which was a wonderful time to be going into this business as an actor, because a kitchen sink drama had, had already begun, to, and they were working class actors like Michael Caine, yeah. Alan Bates, Albert Finney, all coming to the fore. So that was a wonderful time to be in. And those, those were dramas about life in the north, and you know, yes. people having, you know, going through grinding poverty, and... Yeah. Uh, just basically a gritty hard life. Yes, and it worked, and people loved it. When maybe you got into the 80s and certainly into the 90s, that changed, and, yes, the more educated actor began to rise then. But I think, with a bit of luck, it'll go back, it'll turn. Too late for me, but it will turn well, eventually. You're very well-spoken. You sound like a, a, a possibly a sort of second cousin to to King Charles or something like that, <laughs> borderline aristocracy. Uh, but, in fact, you, you, were, you were born in the east end of London yep. um, to, the, to the ringing sounds of the Bow Bells. Very much so. And, therefore, but you, you actually you had that accent, your London Cockney accent trained out of you. Tell me more about that. I did. When I, well, I went to drama school, as I say, in 1961, uh, and I had a very strong Cockney accent. Very difficult to understand. Mm. Um, I was the only one in the school that did have that sort of accent. But one lovely teacher, an older actress, took me under her wing and she, would, she volunteered to come in every morning at 9 o'clock, the school started at 10, uh, to have a one-to-one -one on elocution. Because she knew that if you wanted to be an actor, yes, you could have a Cockney accent, of course you could, but... There wouldn't have been a long career in that. Now, having said that, Michael Caine hasn't done too bad. But there wouldn't have been many, many parts. So you had to do something with it. And she had, very quickly, I'll tell you, mm. she had up a sleeve, she had a little bone about mm, three quarters of an inch high with a groove at each end. She put it in my mouth, in my teeth, like that. So I would think that way and not that way. That is which remarkable. is what I was doing. That way. So it did that. The second thing it did for me, which was wonderful, it made this tongue, this muscle in your throat, start to come forward mm. and start to move and start to pronounce words like think instead of think. Isn't that something? Thought instead of thought. So that did that. And the third thing it did for me, which was wonderful, most cockneys, their, their, their voice is up in the throat. It's up here. Oh, yes. Doing that. So it took With my Bob voice Hoskins. down there, Bob Hoskins and all of that, yeah, it's up in the throat. But it took the voice down into my diaphragm, which was... Because we were taught then, not for TV, but for theatre, to reach the back of the theatre. So you needed this sort of voice. And that's, thank God, I did that every day, well, five days a week for three years. And it's worked, and thank God it has worked, because since then I've played many parts, not just... Cockney villains. That's exactly right. A, a chameleon. You, you were in the Blues Brothers 2000, which was a massive hit movie. You've done so many things, lots of different genres. Um, you've worked with some big names as well. I think many of my viewers will be very excited just to hear you utter the words Sir David Jason. Sir David Jason. Uh, tell me about working with this guy, because, I mean, he's got to be Britain's <laughs> best-loved comedy actor. Yes. Um, with more than one hit under his belt, not just only Vaults and Horses, A Touch of Frost... Yes. Uh, Darling, Bugs, Darling Bugs, and Bugs and May as Pa Larkin. All of those. Um, and then, of course, his early career on Porridge. Very much so. You know, uh, and some uh, 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 open all hours. 
That's right. Yeah. yeah. So a litany of hits. Um, tell me about working with someone like Sir David Jason. Uh, is he is he a big ego? Are you allowed to make eye contact with him? What's the story? Oh no, 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 no. Mm -hmm. Far from it. Completely for me, the opposite way round. I found David, and I was with him for seventeen and a half years. Yeah. And I found him the most generous actor you could ever work with. Really? No, I don't mean money wise, but in giving. He would give to you. He wanted everybody to be part of the show. It wasn't just him. He was the star of the show, but he didn't want it just to be me, me, me. He wanted us all to have... In fact, quite a few occasions, he gave me quite a few of his lines. However, so. your, your moustache is a lot more dashing than his, I'm going to say <laughs> that. Uh, you are a handsome devil. Well, you're overdoing it. No, have you, have you ever played a kind of a card... You know, sort of a chancer that the girls fall in love with and, and you break their hearts. Because uh, I, yeah, I cast I'm, you in that story. No, way. I tell you what, yes, I did. I did Crossroads. Oh, what, oh, a, what wow. a great, what a great was, soap opera that was. And I was a villain in that, yeah. Oh, yes. A handsome villain. Yes, I turned up <laughs> and I romanced the girl in the beauty parlour. Spare me and the at details. The end of it, Family show. I disappeared with her jewels. Oh, well, I'm, yes. glad, I'm glad that's all you took. Um, amazing. Uh, have you got projects in the pipeline? Yes, I'm going on tour and I have done it for the last three years. Playing the part of Father Brown. Oh, amazing. So there you are. How different is that from a, for a Cockney boy? Definitely. Father Brown, I shall go off on tour again this year. Um, so, yes, I do quite, mo mostly nowadays theatre. Brilliant. Well, long may that wonderful career prosper. Privileged to have you in the studio. John Lyons, do check out Father Brown, which is touring the United Kingdom as we speak.